What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back today because we are going to attempt to drive the 2004 Chevy Monte Carlo LS down to AR headquarters, do a little bit of cleaning, make sure that it makes the trip, check everything out on the lift, make sure it's good to go, and then we're sending that one right back to insurance auto auctions. But before we get into that, I just wanted to see if this old girl would start up on her own. It's been sitting here a while. I got so much to do this car and I just kind of stopped on it. It's really, it's really quite sad actually. It's got a pretty decent oil leak coming from the oil pump housing right there. It just needs to be resealed. We've also got a little bit of oil leaking from the, uh, they're not valve covers exactly, but I guess that's what you would call them, tap it covers, something like that on the side of the block. There and back there, those are leaking a little bit. We need to replace the carburetor. We need to install an electric fuel pump. We need to reroute the fuel lines because they go right up above the exhaust manifold. That's not good. There's quite a bit that we need to do. I need to replace the starter. I got all the parts to do it. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. But it's been a while since we had this old girl started up and running. So I figured, you know, let's, let's see if she wants to cooperate today. It's fairly chilly, especially for an old carbureted car. It's in the 60s. Here we go. Ish. She started right up. Gas gauge, you still gotta, there you go. See, gas gauge comes right back to life, guys. Look at that mileage though. It literally just hit 62,000 miles. It's at 62,300 miles. I've put about 600 miles on this car since I bought it. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? And this radio, man, and the, the green, uh, yeah, the green gauges. Wow. <laughs> I'm impressed by some of the simplest things, guys. And for me, the fact that this car had been parked for 20-ish years, and now you can get out and just fire it up whenever you want and it runs. That's pretty damn impressive to me, man. Pretty damn impressive. So we will end up getting back to work on this sometime in the near future. As you can see, I do have a lot of, I got a lot of stuff for this car in here and we need to get on it. But uh, that's not what this video is about. That's right, this video is about the 2004 Monte Carlo LS. I've had several of you, several of you say that you're interested in this car. Uh, as most of you should know by now, I can't sell cars to the general public. I sell them all through insurance auto auctions. So if you see a car you're interested in, stay tuned. I'll let you know when it gets down to the auction and you will have your opportunity to bid on it along with everybody else. I think it's a fair way of doing things and there's no set price really, you just, you know, bid your best and then hope for the best. There's the 94 Lincoln, the 05 Blazer. We have the 97 Crown Vic P71. There's gonna be another video on that one shortly, unfortunately. Uh, probably gonna have to let that one go. Don't worry, nothing mechanical or anything like that. Uh, just time constraints, not gonna allow us to do what we wanted to do. This is the one we're here to look at today. The 04 Monte Carlo LS. Don't forget, we also have the uh, 98 A6 Avant Quattro and the, uh, what the heck is this? 2004 Volvo XC70 all wheel drive. And yes, there is a CLK 320 over there. We're not even gonna talk about that car. <laughs> We're not even gonna talk about that car. Let's get into the Monty because that's what today's video is about. Is it going to fire up on its own? Let's see. The interesting thing about this, for any of those, uh, for any of, any of you, any those of you, whatever, that are interested in this car, the key seems to be very, very picky about what side you insert it on, okay? So if you insert it on one side, ah, that side, every time. But if you flip it over, uh-uh. Like somebody must have cut the key, oh, there it goes. There it goes, you just gotta, when you flip it over, you really gotta, Okay, I give up. Anyway, use the other side every time. Every time, man. All right, hey. Hey, the check engine light's not on. The check engine light was on last time I was in here. 
Okay. <laughs> I'll take it, man. I will take it. Yes. Yes. That is excellent news. We were taking it down there. Part of the reason we're taking it down there is so we could run a diagnostic on it and figure out why the check engine light's on. It just randomly turned itself off. Okay. Hey, I am not going to complain, man. <laughs> I will not complain. If, if that's what it wants to do, I'm going to let it do it. I want to reattach this mirror, too, while we're down there. This, this mirror needs to get put back on. Like I said before, the AC and everything works. We drove it here about 10 miles or so. How many miles did we put on it? 11. We put 11 miles on it driving it here. It did fine, so I don't suspect that anything's going to go wrong uh, driving at this 120, 130 miles down to AR headquarters and back. But I guess we'll find out. Let me get some stuff loaded up. Let's get on the road. And here we are, driving on the highway. Let me show you guys. We're going 75, almost 80 miles an hour right now. And now I gotta slow down because the van in front of me has decided to slow down, but come on, man, are you serious? <laughs> anyway, we have no warning lights on, and we've now driven 22.2 miles, which is double the original miles we drove from, uh, from uh, insurance auto auctions to the house. So we're doing good, guys. Cruise control works, air conditioning works, power windows work, everything works. And it's nice and quiet, can you hear that? Listen to how quiet the car, I mean, this is a great car. It's got some miles on her, 181,000 miles, but she is a great car. Oh, lovely. All right, we got more people going slow here. So let's just get around the, uh, get around the old Hyundai there. And now we have an Equinox going nice and slow. Anyway, guys, we are making our way. In fact, I'm tempted to stop off at the new house and see uh, see how it's going. That place should be finished. Like, today is October the 16th, and that house is scheduled to be completed November the 8th. Yeah, yeah, like, the, the, the build is done. It's some final touch-ups. We did a walkthrough, and we had to point out some places where, you know, paint needed touch-up here, touch-up there from, you know, people working, moving things in and out. You know, little odds and ends that they had to finish up. The garage door opener was just installed. They still have to put on the gutters. They still have to install a storm shelter. But uh, I think the house is finished. So I guess what we'll do is since uh, we're already out here anyway, why don't we stop at the new house since it's not all that far from AAR headquarters? Shall we? Home sweet home. Yes, sir. First look, guys. First look. We got the, uh, the garage over here. Oh, they did finish the storm shelter. Yes! Yes! I didn't know it was done. This is news to me. Well, it's still drying. You can smell it curing. But I'm, I'm glad we got the storm shelter installed. That had to be a bear because you got to dig out all the cement and the dirt under there. So we have a storm shelter installed now. The garage door opener, brand spanking. I mean, the whole house is brand new, guys. This house was just built. In fact, there should be an inspection sticker in here somewhere. Maybe not. Has it not been inspected yet? I guess not. Normally there would be an inspection sticker with a date, but I guess it's not uh, It's not been inspected yet. Yeah, so this is it. This is the new, uh, the new house. Oh, it smells so fresh in here. The new garage door openers. And uh, it's a very open concept floor plan, which is something that I like. Uh, it's a little dirty. We've had contractors and stuff just in and out of here. Very open floor plan, which as I said, something I really like. We got the kitchen over there. Let me see if I can turn on some lights here. Make it a little bit brighter for you. There we go. There we go. So it's not the biggest house. It's not like I'm some, you know, big shot YouTuber that just built my dream home. You know, it's not that at all. It's a, uh, it's a house. It's a place to live. It's comfortable. It's around 1500 square feet. In fact, it's just a little over 1500 square feet. So it's not huge, but like I said, it is comfortable. We got the kind of, you know, industrial backsplash look going on there. Really like that. Like, Probably should have gone with stainless steel appliances, thinking about it now, but uh, you know, and then in the drawers you get all your, 
you know, all your warranty information and there's probably more crap. I think we got in this closet over here. Yeah, there's more uh, rods and rails and hardware and stuff that the uh, contractors didn't use. It's not finished yet, guys, but she's pretty close. She's pretty close. I'll take you out the, uh, out the back door. We obviously don't have a, uh, we don't have a fence yet. Um, that's something that's gonna be coming in the near future. We also don't have a shop. Yeah, take a look. Take a look at this land. Tell me that is not beautiful, guys. Well, aside from some junk that contractors left out there. Yeah. Anyway, over here, we have our uh, septic system, which I've never had one of these before. I think it's kind of cool because we don't have city water. We don't have city sewage. So yeah, occasionally you gotta have these pumped, I guess, but I don't think it's all that expensive to have them pumped. We're on well water, so we don't have a water bill. You know, there's your uh, aqua, aqua pura. I, I guess, I don't know what all this does. I just know that this is all attached to a well and uh, yeah, anyway, that's that. We've got a nice back porch here, you know, brick house, obviously. Listen to the animals out there. There are, uh, there's chickens and cows and stuff way, way off in the distance back there so you can hear them mooing and everything. Yeah, yeah, I love it, guys. I think I picked a great location and I think we built a really nice house. I really do. This is probably not going to be our forever home. Um, this is a starter home for us. Uh, we own AAR headquarters. We own it outright. We don't owe any money on it at all. And uh, this one cost us a whopping $237,000. Yeah, that's it. $237,000 is all this house was brand new and uh, ready to go. That includes gutters, which are not installed yet. That includes a storm shelter. That includes garage door opener and all the appliances minus a refrigerator. We're gonna go pick one of those out uh, here soon. This house is almost finished, guys. Almost finished. This is the master bedroom. And all the blue tape that you're seeing, this is stuff that, uh, that has to be touched up. You know, like I said, little marks and stuff here and there. The water is on, everything is on, everything works. There's no gas either, it's all electric. So, yeah. This is the new Casa, guys. I don't know. You tell me what you think, man. Walk-in closet. If I can find the, find the light, you can tell I've never, never hardly been in here. All right, a few little, little pieces of tape, as I said earlier, were things that gotta get touched up, but honestly, I think for the price we got, you know how I am with my bargains, right? Like, you, <laughs> you, you guys know I'm always looking for a deal. Ooh, the camera just went blue. Let's see if we can, can we fix that? Ooh, good Lord, let me fix that. Okay, that's a little better. I don't know why, I don't know why the, <laughs> I don't know why the screen went blue on me, but um, three bedrooms two bathrooms, two car garage, and I got a lot of questions like, are you gonna be putting in a shop? Yes, of course I'm gonna be putting in a shop, but this house will not replace AR headquarters. That's not gonna happen. Um, this is not going to replace AR headquarters shop or anything, so I think what we'll end up doing here is we'll end up uh, using this place as kind of like a secondary shop. So I plan on building, this is a laundry room, I plan on building like a 600 square foot shop out here. Just, uh, you know, something, just something nice to have out back here. A 600 square foot shop I think is plenty for here and we'll still use AR headquarters for everything else. This is the, uh, the guest bathroom. Then we got, you know, another bedroom over here and we got another bedroom over here and the screen went blue again. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> so that's it. I mean, it's not a huge house, guys. It's not like it's gonna take an hour to give you the tour of the place. Um, it's comfortable. It's a nice, solidly built brick house. And the whole process was really, uh, it was really fun, actually. It was, it was really fun. We picked a builder. And yes, this is a cookie cutter house. This is not like, you know, we custom designed anything. You know, you basically go in and you pick the design, the style of house that you want. And then you'd start picking the way you want the interior done and then they build it. 
And since this is my first time, it's my first mortgage, it's uh, my first freshly built house. This house took uh, about 10 months to build from scratch. And I'm gonna tell you, it was a lot of fun. It was hard to wait, but it was fun watching the process. And now it is almost done. We put down what's called earnest money. Earnest money is money that you don't get back. If you decide to back out or if something goes wrong, you don't get the money back. Okay, so you put down your earnest money and that guarantees you the house that you paid for. Once they build the house, you pay an inspector to come out and inspect it. As long as it passes inspection, you know, the house is yours. So we are scheduled to close uh, November 8th, assuming that the house is fully completed. Oh, they did do gutters, guys. Holy crap, they did do the gutters. Well, I'll be a son of a gun. Look at that, they did. I didn't even realize they had the gutters installed because they paint matched it to the house. Yeah. Okay, I don't know when they did this. I was out here not that long ago. <laughs> But I guess they got it done, man. I guess they got it done. Hot dang. Okay, so yeah, uh, it looks like this house is gonna be finished then. Because like I said, we're scheduled to close on the 8th. And uh, well, I'm excited. I'm excited, unless something goes just catastrophically wrong. Um, this should be a done deal, man. And I just love the view. I love being able to look out those windows and see farmland and hear cattle, hear the chickens, chickens in the morning and chickens in the evening. I've been out here and just kind of sat on the back porch and got to listen to the chickens as the sun goes down. You get some beautiful sunsets. And one of the best parts for me is we get fiber optic internet, 2.4 gigahertz symmetrical. That means 2.4 gigs up and down of bandwidth for about $130 a month. Yeah, that's a big deal for somebody that does YouTube videos. So there it is. There it was. I figured I'd just throw this in here for some of you guys that were, uh, you know, maybe interested in seeing the new house. It's almost done. It is almost finished. Yes, we will have a security system installed. I hate that that's something that needs to be done, but with the way people are these days, you can never be too safe. But uh, we can't do that until we actually close on the house. We can't have a security system installed until we have paid for the house. So once my mortgage company pays for the house, we can come in here and have, uh, have some cameras and a security system and everything installed. But uh, there's a the new house, guys. There it is. Comment below, tell me what you think. Let's get on down to AR headquarters. Well, we're back on the road again, and we are now at almost 60 miles, guys. Hopefully, it, uh, the brightness or something. Uh, there you go. <laughs> we're at almost 60 miles, and the car is doing great. I've had to turn on the air conditioning because it started getting a little toasty in here. It's only 67 degrees outside, but uh, still was getting a little bit toasty. No check engine light, no issues whatsoever, guys. She's just cruising down the road just fine. Now, I've had a lot of people before ask me, like, why did you move to the country? When I moved to AR headquarters, you know, out in the middle of nowhere, Byers, Oklahoma, why did I move out to the country? Believe it or not, guys, uh, and you know, I think you'll notice a lot of YouTubers end up moving away from the city eventually because uh, subscribers, fans, followers, they'll find out where you live and they just want to show up at your house. And while some people may think that's a great idea and, and there's no harm in it, there, there actually is. There's nothing okay about just randomly showing up at somebody's house when they don't know you. Especially when those people have, you know, a family, a wife and kids. Like, you don't just show up at somebody's house and be like, oh my God, I watch your videos. Hey man, let me tell you something. We appreciate you watching our videos. Absolutely, we do. But there's a big disconnect between watching us on TV or on your phone and showing up at our front door. All right, so you'll find out like Derek from Vice Grip Garage, he recently, I think, bought another place or maybe it wasn't very recent. I can't remember for sure, but he's out in the middle of nowhere too. There's a reason we have to go to the country. It's the only way to keep people from just showing up at your door. And even then it doesn't guarantee that people aren't gonna show up at your door. But it, 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 let me just say at the buyer's address, the AAR headquarters, I didn't have a single person stop by that house. You know, when it's out in the boonies a long way from an interstate, People are less likely to take the chance to show up at your house. Now, if you're in suburbia, you know, in a nice cul-de-sac neighborhood or whatever, 
oh yeah, people show up all day, all day long. They feel safe. They feel safe knocking on your front door. But when it's a house in the sticks, it's a long driveway, and you don't really know what it leads to, suddenly it doesn't seem like such a good idea to go banging on somebody's door. So I'm just here to tell you, for those of you, and, and let me tell you something, I think most people have enough common sense to not just show up at somebody's house that they don't know and beat on the door and be like, hey, surprise. But there are a few people out there they think it's okay to just show up at somebody's house that they don't know and doesn't know you and be like, hey man, I'm entitled to be at your house because I watch your channel. No man, no you're not. Not a chance, man. Anyway, that is the reason. That is the reason you see a lot of YouTubers having to just kind of get out of the city, man. And they either got to move into private communities like gated communities or they got to move out to the boondocks, you know, where everybody carries guns and watches out for each other. Anyway, I thought I'd just throw that out there because I have had a lot of questions. A lot of people ask, like, isn't it inconvenient to move out to the country? Yes. <laughs> yes. It is 100% inconvenient to move to the country when everything you do for video is in the city. 100% inconvenient. But you know what? The price of that inconvenience is feeling a lot safer and a lot more secure at your home. Hey, remember that, guys. That's 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 our home. Okay? Those those very few of you that think it's okay to show up, remember that. This is not you showing up at our job. Even that is a little weird. If you were to show up at a shop, you know, if you were to show up while I'm working at AR headquarters shop, that, without letting me know, without asking, that would be weird. But it would be a lot less weird then if you showed up at my front door, just imagine, imagine, put yourself in our shoes, right? Imagine we're at our home, we're enjoying our day, or you're at home, you're enjoying your day, and suddenly some stranger, you don't know if they're up to any good or not. You don't know what their intentions are. They just show up at your house and your kid answers the door. And they're like, hey, little boy, I watch your dad on YouTube. Oh, hell no, hell no, man. That's weird. You can't be doing that. That's weird. I had one guy, one guy once, and this has happened many times, but this one guy, uh, he, he rode his motorcycle from like Maine all the way down. He was going around the country just showing up at YouTubers' houses. Yeah, just showing up at YouTubers' houses. When I asked him how he got my address, he said that he works for some big real estate company. I'm not going to give the name, but he works for a, a major real estate company, okay? And he used their system at his job to locate me so that he could show up at my house. Yeah, yeah. So the first time he did it was not cool, and I moved. Then he showed up at my next house, and that was it. I told him never again, never again. Do not ever show up on my front door again. Anyway, enough with the rant, guys. We are now 62.2 miles into this trip. We're almost there. Let's get to the let's get the rest of the way there. I have no doubt it's going to make it. As you can see, no warning lights, no issues at all. This one is a trooper. But we got to get it up on the lift real quick. Take a look underneath it. Make sure it's not gushing any fluids out. And then we'll make the trip back home. Oh, you know what? We got to clean it up. It needs a bath. We need to try to clean up those headlights as well. Now it's time for my favorite part of this drive. I, I get people asking me all the time also, doesn't the drive out there get tiresome, like an hour drive? It's an hour down here and it's an hour back. Yeah, it gets a little tiresome, but I'm here to tell you, man, this bridge and this scenery, nah, man, never gets tired. Never gets tiresome, not to me. The drive itself, yes, but being able to uh, drive over that bridge, I love it, man. I love it out here. Nice scenic back roads where you could do burnouts and whatever you want out here, man. There's nobody out here to tell you no. That's all, I'm not gonna say anything else about it. Like, you could do pretty much whatever you want out here with no consequence. All right, so there's a couple things I want to do while we're down here. We're going to clean up the wheels and tires, give it a quick bath, and we're going to try to do something with these foggy headlights, man. Those headlights look absolutely horrible. I think I got some cutting compound, a little bit of polish. We might be able to make that look a little bit better. Let's go ahead and pop the hood real quick. Make sure it's not, you know, smoking or any weird stuff like that. 
Nope. I knew it would, man. This is a great little car. Why it ended up parked and ultimately ended up sitting at insurance auto auctions for sale, I don't know. I, I have no idea. No idea. Carfax report does show that the lower intake manifold gaskets were done on this. And when you do the lower intake manifold gasket, everything above that has to get done as well. So a shop did it. Very nice. Very nice. Few dents and dings, a few bumps and bruises, but ultimately not a bad looking car. Let's get it up in the air. Let's take a look underneath it. Make sure we don't have anything serious going on on the underside. I'll tell you something, guys. That lift does a hell of a job, man. <laughs> it does. That lift does a hell of a job. I'm so thankful for this shop. I got a lot of people asking, like, why don't I just build a new shop? Well, guys, this shop cost me over $50,000 of my own money to build, and that's when lumber prices were cheap a couple years ago. This same shop would be insanely expensive for me to build today and uh, I already have it. So I don't really see the point in building a new one and spending a bunch of extra money when I already have this one. So yeah, anyway, we'll start at the back. We're looking for rust. We're looking for anything that looks like it's out of place. You see anything? Let's take a look at the suspension. How's the suspension look? Wow. Um, very impressive. Very impressive. You can see some scrapage right here where the forks, the forklifts ended up getting a hold of it. But uh, ultimately, wow. I mean, it rides like a dream. Lots of surface rust to be expected. Plastic gas tank, of course. Got your fuel filter right there. Nice and easy to get to. Exhaust is looking good. So is the entire underbody of the car. I mean, this, this, car, is, this car is in phenomenal condition. Now, to the parts that everybody wants to know, like, is it pouring oil and transmission fluid? Mm, you guys can look for yourself. Take a look at the, uh, at the bushings. Looks like we got a torn bushing on the outer tie rod on the passenger side there. And you got your, uh, your sway bar. You know, it's a little fatigued, but not too bad. Looks all right. Control arm bushings look fine. Let's come over here to this side. Take a peek, same type of deal. Torn bushing on the uh, outer tie rod. CV axle looks good. Sway bar bushing looks good. All of the main mounts for the subframe and everything look good as well. You can see that, very nice. Same thing up there. Shows a little signs of fatigue there, but nothing, uh, nothing that I would say is out of the ordinary. There we are right there. All right, transmission. There's your transmission pan. Nice and dry, guys. Nice and dry. And you can even see up the engine a little bit there. You kind of get up there just a tad bit. You can see those spark plug wires back there. This thing is in a really solid condition. Now, it is dripping a little bit of oil around the bottom here. Looks like the drain plug for sure is dripping some. Um, it's a little wet up there as well from the front seal. You can see, see that it's leaking a little bit right there, but ultimately it's not dropping anything on the floor, guys, or on the concrete. I had it parked in the shop for days and it didn't leave a drop of anything. So I would say nothing out of the ordinary for a car like this, nothing at all. Suspension looks good. Everything looks really good. And I'm not surprised. I'm really not surprised because the dang thing drove down here with absolutely no issues at all. It had no issue getting here, drove like a dream. I guess it's time to drop this thing down. Let's try to clean up those headlights, give the car a quick detail, and she'll be ready to go down the road. All right, for those of you wondering what we're gonna be using today, well, here it is. This is gonna be your McGuire's uh, Ultra or Ultimate Mirror Glaze Cut Compound. This stuff works great. We're using a drill with a little bit of that stuff on the head. Now, I'm not looking for perfection. If I was, we'd be sanding this because this is super rough. Honestly, the best thing to do would be to sand this, but uh, I don't have any sandpaper. We masked off this area. Let's see if we can make this one look any better than that one. It'd be nice if we had a little bit of sandpaper uh, because, can you hear that? This is like where somebody did this before and oh man, ooh. That is awful. I don't think we're gonna get anything done with this uh, cutting compound on this. This needs to be sanded. I didn't realize it was that bad. Ooh. 
wow yeah this needs to be sanded guys this is far beyond uh what you're going to be able to do with uh with just some cutting compound let me see if i can find some sandpaper maybe we can try to do something to make it look a little better i don't know well unfortunately as i expected i don't have any sandpaper so i'm just going to keep uh i'm going to keep hitting it with this and we'll see if we can make it look any better. I mean, I'm not expecting a miracle. That's not gonna happen. This needs to be sanded, but if we can make it look a little better, I guess it's worth an extra few minutes, guys. So I'm gonna get back on it. Give it a chance to dry a little bit. Yeah, this, is, this is just really rough, guys. Really, really rough. I'll be honest, I'll be shocked if we have made any difference in this at all honestly this this is uh this is one of the worst i've ever come across it is just super cloudy super bad really really bad i wish i had some sandpaper and because we're out in the middle of nowhere on a sunday uh there's nowhere i'm going to be able to go get sandpaper or the proper uh equipment to do this one of those little headlight kits would probably knock this out i don't know so far what do you think can you tell a difference? I think I can. I think I can tell a difference. It's it's getting there. We still got a ways to go. Let me finish this up. We'll come back and see the final result. All right, now on a serious note, comment below. Does this one look any better than that one? Uh, you know, I'm looking at, I'm standing right in front of it and I'm looking at it and it's like, yes, it does. I think so. I think it, I think it actually looks considerably better, maybe 25, 30% better, but ultimately enough to make it worth the time to do this. No, no, I wish I had the, uh, the headlight kit to do this properly. I really do. I could make these headlights look brand spanking new. Like I said, it's Sunday and I'm all the way out in the middle of nowhere. So, you know, it's just not an option. So we're gonna do the best we can with what we got. Let me knock out this other headlight and then we're gonna take it outside, get those wheels and tires cleaned up, get the body washed, and then we're ready to head back to the house. All right, well, here she is, guys. She's not washed or anything yet. We're about to start on that now. I did clean up the interior. I'm about to hang that rear view mirror back up. She's pretty filthy on the outside, guys, but the inside, I think, came out pretty dang nice. She's vacuumed, she's cleaned up. I love that two-tone seat, I really do. That kind of purplish blue. She's looking good. I've got the rear view mirror uh, nub stuck back in place. Just waiting to make sure that that's dry. We've got the dash cleaned up. The windows are cleaned. Guys, the only thing left to do now is to give the body a wash, clean up those tires, and we're gonna pull out the super clean. We're gonna spray this engine down, get it cleaned up a little bit as well. Now, for those of you that don't know, I love my super clean, man. I do. And this is one of those very forgiving engines that'll let you get it wet <laughs> without uh, going kaput on you. So I like to just kind of spray liberally, man. Get it all up in there. Cover everything you can. And uh, then we spray it off. And when we're done, well, I can tell you this, she's not going to look like she does now. She's actually going to look like a respectable engine. Let me, uh, let me finish spraying this stuff all over the place in here. Get that engine good and wet. We'll spray it off and we'll see what she looks like when we're done with j nothing more than a simple water hose, guys. I'm not using a pressure washer or anything, just a water hose and some super clean in the aerosol can. This stuff is great. Shake it up as needed. Spray it down in there. Ooh, don't breathe it though. I don't recommend you breathe it. And now it's time to spray it off. See what she looks like. There you go. Like I said, the water pressure here is not great, guys. So this isn't like a doesn't like we're using some super high powerful uh, water pressure here. We're not. Just uh, just some super clean. And what little water pressure we have outside of the hose here, that's it. 
just enough to try to clean it up, make it look a little more presentable. You'd be surprised how important that is, guys. There's a lot of people look at the engine, they're like, oh, if it's not clean, they're not, they're not even interested in it. Now, me personally, I don't care. Someone that's been around the, around the block for a while probably feels the same way. You know, a, a super clean engine may actually be something that uh, deters you from looking at a car because you're like, all right, what's wrong with it? <laughs> Why was somebody under here cleaning up the engine bay? But, uh, man, you know, whatever. There's no harm in making it look as good as we can. You and I know there's nothing wrong with this car. Like, we know that. Made it all the way down here. I have no doubt that it's gonna make it all the way back without issue. Belt might squeak a little bit when we fire it back up, though, with all this water on it. Clean those fan blades and everything off. Yeah, she is looking super clean, guys. This stuff, this stuff works amazing. I'm talking like, you can see the water pressure coming out of this hose. It is awful. Like, it's, it's almost embarrassing. It's why I have a pressure washer out here. And I could have drugged the pressure washer out and I could have done it that way, but I figured why not just show you what Super Clean can do by itself. Like that and just a little bit of water pressure. Doesn't take much. All right, guys, I'm gonna finish this up. We'll take a look at it. You guys can tell me what you think. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you tell me. Did it come out good or did I waste my time? I don't know, man. You know, I typically do send these things to detail. Um, when I want a car to come out looking professional, like perfect, and I'm willing to spend a lot of money on it, I send that down to Brian at the Auto Spot LLC. Let me tell you something, that man and his business is worth its weight in gold. I'm telling you. But unfortunately, most of the cars that I deal in are not worthy of the best of the best. You know what I mean? So we have to do things a little different. So typically I use on the spot mobile detail and they're a great service because they come out to my house. This is not, none of this is sponsored by the way, but they come out to my house, man. And they take care of me. I can be out doing other things while they're taking care of my cars. And on the spot, we'll do whatever job you pay them to do. If you pay them to do a, you know, a mediocre job to just kind of clean it up make it look good get it ready for sale then that's the job they're going to provide you pay them for like you want ceramic coating paint correction they will do all of that as well unfortunately several of the cars that i have i just i have too much money in like this one guys we paid over two thousand dollars out the door for this car and there is no money left on the table to pay for detail so we had to do it ourselves and you know it's a cheap quick nasty detail man it's not perfect it's just enough to make it look better now mechanically there's nothing we had to do there was nothing we had to fix there's nothing that needed to be covered up no major secrets that this one is hiding look at what super clean did man look at the job super clean did on this engine bay wow that stuff never ceases to amaze me man it makes the engine look so good so good and uh you know, I cleaned up the tires, I gave it a bath, we got all the leaves and crap that were in the trunk and everything out, we wiped down the interior, we cleaned up the windows, I put some tire shine on the tires that honestly doesn't look like it's very good, but that tire shine's probably five years old anyway. But I think the car looks better than it did, and at the end of the day, that's all that matters. The only thing left for us to do is let's get on the road and drive that thing back to the house before it gets dark. Make sure there's no other issues. And then guys, she's ready to go to auction. Now, real quick, before I forget, this video will come out when the car is ready to go up for auction, okay? So when I have a stock number for this, when the listing is ready to go, this video will come out. So if you're watching this right now and you're sitting there screaming, Randy, I wanna buy that car, how do I buy it? You bid on it through IAA. How do you do that? There's a link down below, guys. Just down below in the description box. I'll probably pin one in the comment section as well. There will be a link for you and uh, you can bid on this car, okay? So if you're watching this video, that means there should be a link down there for you to click on, takes you straight to this car. So far, guys, she's a good one. 
she's a good one. So I'm ready to get this thing on the road and get it home. I'm hoping that that little uh, nub that I stuck back on the windshield will hold the rear view mirror without it falling across my fingers. I didn't have anything other than super glue. Sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. We got to restock up on supplies here at AR headquarters, guys. And it uh, looks like this yard needs mowed too. Let's get back to the house. It's six o'clock or so. I'm ready for dinner. I think we made it, guys. Find us a little parking spot here. Oh, there's the headlights all working. We have been 140 miles. Yeah, 140 miles in a car that we know nothing about. We bought it, hopped in it, and just started driving, guys. That means I have spent over two hours driving this car. If that doesn't tell you how good of a car it is, I don't think anything will. Guys, we got a lot of cars sitting out here. I mean, we really do. We got a lot of cars sitting out here. Don't forget, we also have a 1953 Pontiac Chieftain with a straight eight and a three on the tree sitting down in a in Mako right now, guys. Let's go ahead and pop this hood real quick. So we've got, what I'm trying to say is we got a lot of cars. We, got, <laughs> we do, we got a lot of cars and we got a lot more to come, guys. Um, let's take a peek under the hood here one last time and just see how beautiful this 3400 is. She's a gym, guys. Good pressure on the cooling system, no issues with overheating, no transmission problems, nothing, guys. She just runs like a champ. I don't know, comment below and tell me what you think of the little car, man. I think, I, I think honestly, now I've overpaid for it. I'm pretty sure that I've overpaid for it. It also has a nice set of tires. They're practically new. Air conditioning works. And as you can see, we still have absolutely no warning lights on the dash at all, other than, of course, my door being open. Oh, there's the rear view mirror. How about that? Yeah, it's got a rear view mirror now. Let's go ahead and shut her down. I think that's a wrap for the video, guys. Uh, you know what? I am going to patch that up real quick. I got a piece of, uh, of Gorilla Tape that I think will work perfectly to just make that look a little bit better. Does that look any better? <laughs> I mean, I know. I know it is what it is, though, man. She's ready, guys. She's ready it's time to send her down the road. So I know there's gonna be some of you that are like, hey man, you should hold on to that car, Randy. You should keep it and drive it and enjoy it for a while. I get that a lot. I get a lot of you guys saying that. And I understand, you know, I understand where you're coming from. The problem is, is I have 12 cars right now. There is no possible way for me to provide each of them the, the time they deserve to be driven, man, to actually be taken out and enjoyed and driven on the road. I just can't, there's too many of them. And that's by my own design, man. It's my own fault. I did it to myself. The reason I'm getting rid of this one first is because that one is probably worth the most money. I don't know, I could be wrong, but I mean, consider this. I paid over $2,000 from it. It's like a $1,600 winning bid. And it came out to just over $2,000. Now, I've got nothing into it other than my time. Um, I haven't even put gas in this car yet. So that speaks volumes, I think. It is a great car. Why it ended up in insurance auto auctions, I have no idea, but we have driven it 140 miles with absolutely no issue. So I'm gonna say, it's a good car and it's ready to go. Mainly because if I can get my two grand back out of it, right, uh, that'll go a long way to buy something else. I, I, I don't wanna get into it right now, but there is something else that I'm eyeballing. I think it'd be a lot of fun to bring to the channel. And I can buy it without selling it, but it'd be a whole lot easier for me to buy it if I went ahead and sold this. So here's what I got. I got three cars on the chopping block right now, okay? This is number one, and I'm gonna tell you right now, number two is gonna be the police interceptor, the uh, 97 Crown Vic, which you guys are actually sitting on top of right now. And number three on my chopping block is the, uh, the Volvo XC70. I have no use for those cars. And the reason why the uh, Crown Vic, I know it was going to paint, it was going to paint, 
and now it's on the chopping block. Why? Well, there's going to be a video about this car here in the near future, so stay tuned, and we will go over that. I'll take you guys out. We'll take it down to AR headquarters, most likely, and I'll take you guys out for a cruise in it. Um, the Volvo XC70, there is no real reason for it. I bought it. It was cheap. I drove it home. It runs and drives fine with cold air. You know, the same old freaking story everything here everything here just you pick it up it runs and it drives great so i don't need the volvo i have no interest in the volvo so i'm just going to send it back to auction and we'll see what happens with it the crown vic though uh, there is a little story behind it nothing wrong with the car but there is a reason that we're going to go ahead and send it down the road and uh it's kind of sad because I was really looking forward to getting this one painted. Listen, guys, I got to get out of here. Dinner is waiting. If you enjoyed the content, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. Let me know you enjoyed the content. If you didn't, well, go ahead and hit that thumbs down button. I appreciate each and every one of you for watching. Be sure to drop those comments down below. Tell me what you think of this car. And remember, if you see in this video, this car is already up for sale, which means down below is a link in the comment section and in the description box. A direct link takes you straight to Insurance Auto Auctions where you can bid on this car yourself. Stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.